Hello everyone, uh, this is Archie Dodge with Imaginate Technologies and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, maintaining personal variables, personal, personal list routines, personal key, key, uh, keyboard command presses. Okay, so this is uh, meant for personal settings. So just, uh, just a warning, uh, this has the potential to overwrite any standards that your organization may have set up. So make sure you consult with your, your CAD manager. Uh, prior to this to make sure what your CAD standards are so that you don't overwrite those. Uh, very important. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Alright, so before any customization takes place we want to make sure that we don't um, modify the, the install that was created. Uh, that way any uh, changes to our profile will be limited to our profile and won't actually um, destroy the default profile which which gives you a good starting point. All right, so I'm going to open up Civil 3D here, and to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into our options. Uh, you could either type in OP for options, or right-click in in your uh, viewport here and go to options. And then uh, what we're looking for is profiles. Currently, we're set to this uh, Civil 3D underscore Imperial. Notice the uh, little brackets on the side. So we're actually going to create a new one. So we're going to add to the list, and then we're going to call this one Personal Support just for uh, this training purpose. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that uh, profile name because we're going to use that later. Uh, okay, so this profile is going to be personal support. I'm going to apply and, and close. Uh, from here, we have this here. Uh, whatever we create, whenever we do add to list, whatever person or uh, whatever current profile we're on, that's what it's actually going to start off with. So I, I actually like using this one as a starting point to have all the, all the um, um, features of the Civil 3D Imperial uh, to start with. So that's a good one. And then I'm going to go ahead and set current and you'll see this up here. Alright, so I'm going to hit OK. And I'm also going to close out AutoCAD because when we start up AutoCAD, uh, the, the shortcuts that actually start AutoCAD, they are based on um, a particular profile. And I'm going to show you how to go ahead and change this. So I'm going to come in, in here to my start menu and I'm going to find my Civil 3D. Uh, this is the Imperial that we based off our, um, our profile off of. So I'm going to right click on this. Now this is in um, Windows 10 so this might look a little bit different than yours. Uh, but what I'm looking for is open file location so that it brings us directly to these uh, shortcuts. Now you can see I have a couple custom ones in here now but we do not have the personal support one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this Imperial and just paste it right in here and go ahead and allow that. And now we have this um, copy here. So I'm going to overwrite that Imperial copy. I'm just going to go ahead and paste. Oh, it doesn't look like it took it. So personal support. And that's what we called that. Um, that's what we called that. Uh, profile so we're going to go ahead and continue with that and here it is and before we go any farther we need to right click on that personal support one that we just renamed and come down to properties now in this target right here there's a whole bunch of stuff going on but what we're looking for is what we call a p-switch and the p-switch looks like this right here so this uh, forward slash p that's called a p-switch and basically what that tells uh, this shortcut to do is run the profile that's found within these um, quotation marks so we're actually changing the the civil uh, c3d imperial along with the brass brackets to our uh, personal support all right so you hit ok uh, make sure you allow that and then from here, uh, we can just double click on that, and that's how we're going to run that profile. So we're going let it, to let it go ahead and start up, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the options just to verify. And then from here, we can start doing our personal support. All right, so now that we're up and running, I'm going to come back into our options. And then right up top here, we can see which profile we're using. So it's a success, our shortcut will uh, launch our personal support profile. Okay, so now that we have that set up, now we can do uh, personal um, customization without um, making any changes to the default profiles. Right here on screen, uh, I have a folder here. It's a, direct, a directory that I have 
out here on my desktop and I just called it personal support folder now this this personal support folder is a prime candidate to use with um, Dropbox or OneDrive or any uh, other uh, cloud sharing platform that that you might use uh, using them in conjunction with these types of uh, services will allow you to have all your variables uh, key presses and list routines always at hand no matter where you are uh, so if you ever need to wipe out your your interface your AutoCAD interface you can bring it back quickly or if you ever decide to change uh, jobs and go to another uh, firm uh, you always have your personal supports no matter where you go all right so in this uh, directory here I have one file here it's an ACAD doc now by default AutoCAD looks for a couple files uh, one of which is the ACAD doc now these by default do not exist so you do have to create this um, and it's easy to create just within your directory just right click on an empty spot uh, start a new um, we could do a rich rich text format I believe that'll work and that'll give us um, something here where we could just uh, call it ACAD doc or I'm sorry ACAD doc dot list we'll get rid of uh, all the rest here all right so that's how you'll create your um, list routine or I'm sorry your ACAD doc list um, so it's just a basic uh, text file uh, you can do it in a notepad if you'd like uh, just start 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 up a notepad and save it as ACAD doc dot list now there's another uh, file similar to this it's called the ACAD dot list now both of these files are looked for by AutoCAD or by AutoCAD and all of its verticals and if it finds it it runs it no matter what's in there it will run it okay uh, the difference between the ACAD lisp and the ACAD doc dot lisp is the ACAD runs runs one time during the session so the first time you run a uh, civil 3d for that session it'll execute what's uh, found in this list routine the ACAD doc dot lisp however it executes it every time you open up a new drawing so each time you open a new drawing it's going to go ahead and make sure all those settings are set for each uh, drawing that you work in all right so now that we have that set in our uh, personal support uh, in my case on desktop uh, but um, uh, remember file sharing programs are fantastic for this uh, but now that we have that created we're going to go ahead and open this now there are um, a bunch of editors that you can use including just a basic notepad uh, program I actually prefer using um, notepad plus plus which is right here uh, so notepad plus plus is a open source program it's a free download and uh, the reason why I like using this is because it, it kind of color codes things um, or color codes things in in your code so you know where errors are so I, I highly recommend using some sort of editor that has the functionality to read list routines all right so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so we can see what's going on in here uh, so this does this is list routine so you do need to do some minor minor list routines you don't need to know Lisp that well as you can see the um, everything that we're using is very very simple uh, so we're gonna open bracket and then command and then whichever variable that we want to set so in this case uh, I'm setting command echo to zero and uh, you can see right here after any of these uh, semicolons uh, semicolon denotes a, a comment so this is uh, just telling us what this this line is going to do so basically turning command echo will turn off uh, command feedback on the command line and then you can see down here I turn it back on so basically what this does uh, whenever this ACAD doc dot list gets called it'll turn off command feedback and go ahead and run all of these commands so essentially just run, running these commands and setting these variables in the background all right so so that's just uh, command echo this is totally optional whether you put this in yours or not I like to put it in there just so that uh, it looks a little cleaner whenever I start it uh, down here I actually created a, um, a section here called general variables uh, you can see one of them here there's a variable called cursor size and I set that to 100 
and what's that what that's going to do is set my cursor to the fullest extent of the viewport so that uh, my horizontal and vertical lines on my cursor go all the way to each edge of the viewport and also I have a file DIA here set this is a a perfect example of the type of variables that you may want to maintain so file DIA when it's set to zero when you try to open a new file instead of opening up a dialog box it it prompts you on the command line not me, many people like doing that and most people are comfortable with having the dialog box so this is a prime example of a, um, a variable that you may want to maintain so to maintain these variables, uh, just like what we did up here, the, the syntax is uh, open parenthesis and then command. And basically this is a, an auto list function that will execute a command. Uh, so essentially what we're doing is typing on the command line cursor size. And then right after that, we're setting the setting for this. So in this case, we have two variables. Our cursor size will be set to 100 and we'll have uh, our file DIA is set to one. All right. So once we have that, we can go ahead and save this. Now we will be adding to this uh, throughout this video to kind of add uh, some list routines as well. But uh, this is a good start. We're going to go ahead and save this. And now that we have that in our, our uh, personal support folder saved, we'll, we'll go ahead and start uh, Civil 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and start Civil 3D 2019. Um, this is a default setting, so whatever, I, whatever I'm showing here should be what you see when you first install Civil 3D. Now, it's important to note also that this, uh, this um, way we're going to maintain these settings, this is available to be used on basic AutoCAD in any vertical product. So if you have a Civil 3D, um, you know, MEP, anything that's vertical, AutoCAD, this, um, this will work for you. All right, so now that we have AutoCAD uh, running, in this case I'm working with Civil 3D, uh, you can see immediately my cursor does not fill the screen, so we know that our settings are not set yet. So now that we have AutoCAD set up running, uh, we want to go ahead and apply that personal support folder. Okay, so to do so, we're going to go ahead and open our options. Uh, there's a few ways to do it, either by typing OP for options. Uh, you could also right click um, in your in your uh, model space and then just, just choose options. Uh, there's other ways, but these seem to be the, the quickest ways to get to them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And what we're looking for is the files tab and support file search path. Okay, so we'll open that up. We'll add a new line down here and we'll browse to that. So mine was out here on the um, the desktop right here under personal support. So that's, that's the folder that I'm looking for. So I'm going to hit OK. And we're all the way at the bottom, so we need to move that to the top. Unfortunately, you can't just drag and drop. You will have to use these buttons. So just click this all the way until it gets all the way to the top. OK. So now that we're there, we can hit OK. And to make sure that that setting is set, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out. So anytime you make any changes to your settings, such as this, uh, make sure you close out Civil 3D or AutoCAD and then reopen. And the reason why is when you make these settings, it doesn't actually write it to the registry until you close out, which means if you make these settings and you continue to work and for whatever reason uh, AutoCAD crashes on you, those settings uh, will not be remembered. All right, so now that we have that closed, we'll open it back up uh, just to make sure that, um, you know, we close it just to make sure that setting's set. Uh, we're going to open it back up, and then from here we should see a change in our, our um, cursor. Uh, the first time you run this, if this is not in a, um, um, a location that has been approved, uh, you'll, you'll get this right here. So we're just going to go ahead and always load uh, because we know that that personal support, we know it's not malicious. Uh, we created it and we have control over it. So we're just going to go ahead and load all or always load. All right. So now that um, Civil 3D is up and running, uh, we should see our very or our uh, cursor all the way from one side to another. All right. So that's a, a quick and easy way to verify 
that this is there. Uh, another way to verify is uh, on the, your command line. Just go ahead and start typing uh, open parenthesis find find file as one word space, and then in uh, quotation marks we're going to call we're going to look for this as uh, acad doc dot list, and then we'll close the quotes and the parentheses and hit enter. So that'll give you uh, um, the location of the ACAD doc dot list if it is found. So uh, with that feedback there, we know that it did find it did find it, which means that it did load. Okay, so that's uh, handling basic variables when it comes to cursor size, file file DIA, and you can have a running list as long long as you'd like. Um, so that's uh, handling custom variables. Uh, next, we're going to talk about loading and managing uh, list routines. Okay, so first off, we need to go ahead and add a list routine. So here, back in our uh, support folder, where our ACAD doc, uh, dot lisp is, we're going to go ahead and add a list routine. Now, I have one created here, so I'm just going to copy it in here. Uh, I created this one because I don't like the default break uh, command where it breaks and then asks you to, you know, anyway, I like to break it at a point. So that that's what this command is, or this Lisp routine is for. Uh, feel free to copy this and uh, create your own Lisp out of it if you'd like. Uh, but the, in this one here, there are two functions here. One of them is break, uh, which is using the basic break command, which uh, pauses for user input and then restarts it back at the first input or uh, the first point, and then again, pauses for user input. And wherever the user selects, uh, it's going to go ahead and break it at that point. Uh, down here, we have another one called break at feature, and it, it's essentially the same thing, only this one is used just for uh, feature lines. All right, so now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and load this in our ACAD doc.list. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and drop down a couple lines and we're going to make a comment here just so that we know that this is auto list handling. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to create a new line to go ahead and load this. So we're to load a list routine, we're going to open parenthesis, load, space, and then op uh, quotation marks, and then we're going to name it exactly what the list routine is. And this li list routine is named uh, break at Dot LSP. So we're going to close the parenthesis and close, uh, I'm sorry, close the quotation and then close parenthesis. Now I also like uh, to add a comment after this uh, to let people know, in my case, the user, what this command is for this particular list routine. So if we come back here, you can see that uh, break at and break at dash feature are the two commands. So. Just put that in there, and then another one, break at dash feature. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we can go ahead and save this. Now, I do want to note this right here. Um, since I put this uh, list routine in with the ACAD doc, there's no need to add a, um, a, a address here. Uh, so as long as it's found within the same folder as the ACAD doc, you could put just the Lisp uh, routine name, and that's it. No need for for the whole um, address. Okay. So now that we have that, we have break uh, break at dot Lisp. We've saved it, and then uh, so we we already talked about the difference between the ACAD Lisp and the ACAD doc dot Lisp. Since we're using an ACAD doc dot Lisp, we don't need to close down. We simply need to open up a new drawing. Because remember, the ACAD doc.list loads every time a new drawing loads. So whenever I start a new drawing, uh, it's going to find that list routine, and we're going to go ahead and tell it to always load these new list routines. And now we should have a break at and a break at feature command. Okay, so you can see the the list routines did load. Uh, I don't have to I don't have to use the startup suite where uh, most people are used to. I don't have to type in and load and then find it. Uh, all this stuff loads automatically through the ACAD doc.list. Now, from here, we have the break at command, but that's a rather long command. 
or even break at feature even longer, right? So instead of typing that in all the time, I'm going to go ahead and change my custom or my my key, keyboard commands uh, to override that. So what I'm what my intent is to change my br from the basic break to my list routine, and then I'm also going to add another one for brr to go ahead and use that as my feature line break or break break at dash feature command. All right. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and add custom keyboard commands into a, a, a file, which is called the acad.pgp file. To find that, if you're not sure where this is, again, we're going to use find file. Uh, in, the print, in the quotation mark, we're going to look for acad.pgp, and we're going to close the quotation and the parentheses and hit enter. All right, so this will give you feedback of where to find your PGP file, and I do recommend doing this for every new release um, because, you know, AutoCAD is always releasing new commands, deleting other commands, so I do recommend always finding that for every new release and then um, using that as your starting, starting point. All right, so now that we found that, uh, we're just going to go ahead and copy it right into our personal support folder. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and open this, and we're going to view uh, what's in here. Again, I'm using uh, Notepad++. Uh, it just seems a little bit easier to work with a lot of things. All right, so this is the ACAD uh, PGP file. This file maintains all the command alias. Uh, in this case, I'm working in 2019, so you can see I, I did pull this from 2019 so that I do have the most up-to-date um, keyboard commands. And farther down the list, you'll see that there's some outdated commands as well. Okay, so this uh, using the P ACAD PGP from the release that you're working in is, is definitely something you want to do to make sure you have the most up-to-date command list. Uh, now, if we go all the way down to the bottom here, down here we have user to find command aliases. And this is where we're actually going to create uh, command aliases that we want to do and down here I've already went ahead and created some but you can see the the, the syntax for this is going to be the the command or the the keyboard presses that you want to use and then the uh, command that you want to associate to that so in this case whenever I have L or whenever I type L it's actually going to run a polyline and then BR is going to run break and then BRR is going to run break at feature okay so uh, make sure you have a, a comma after your command uh, keyboard command and then have a an asterisk before the actual command that you want it to invoke all right so now that we have our uh, ACAD PGP file we can go ahead and add that to our our work work environment. Now, unlike the ACAD PGP, or I'm sorry, the ACAD doc.lisp, where all you need to do is uh, start a new drawing and it, it runs it, the ACAD PGP file, uh, there's two other ways to do, or there's two ways to actually update that one. Uh, one is to actually close out AutoCAD altogether and then restart a new session. Uh, that'll uh, reinitialize the, um, the ACAD PGP. Uh, if you're working in the middle of something, you add a new um, uh, keyboard command to your a ACAD PGP file, and you don't want to shut down and restart, uh, you could actually type in um, re-init, which uh, is the command for reinitialize. Uh, so when you, once you put that in there, re-init, that'll bring up this uh, re reinitialize initialization uh, dialog and right here you'll see the PGP file so once we check that just hit OK and that will reload it so now whenever I type in L you'll see that it uh, it actually invokes our P line rather than line so this is a personal support um, how to handle personal support again remember this is used to supplement your organization's um, standards so if, um, if they're missing a variable that you feel that you need in your day-to-day -day, um, CAD drafting, uh, go ahead and use this. Uh, but again, uh, let's not uh, override any standards that your organization might have. 